And boom, welcome back to the Fat Earth Comedy Cast. We have episode 32 coming at you. Big Jimmy's on location throwing fucking butt darts. I got my good friend Neo here. He's from the future. But he, we're doing another Friday Night Frights, folks. We're going to get all scary on you. But yeah, my buddy, uh, we, we're going as his alias, Neo. He's got a couple of creepy tales. He grew up in Gross Point, kind of like the where Jimmy's stories were. Well, not kind of like it. It was right by the same area. Um, what's going on, my man? Um, not much. Doing pretty good. How are y'all doing today? I'm doing good, man. Another Friday. It's it's crazy. Like right when this boo. this ep- boo, right when this epidemic started, the the days were creeping by like fucking snails, and now all of a sudden it seems like they're flying by. Oh yeah, I mean the whole thing is uh, drags for some hours, and then and on other hours, it's like I can't believe eight weeks has gone by. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, but uh. So yeah, we've been doing these Friday night frights. We did, uh, we did. Well, we did one of them. We were trying to keep, do them every Friday, but that really fell through. Um, so, th- <laughs> did you see the one where Jimmy was telling his story about uh, his dad's house in Gross Point? I d- I didn't see that episode, but uh, if it's Friday night and it's in Gross Point, then <laughs> you you might want to go monitoring stuff. Yeah, yeah. So your story actually takes place in gross point two jimmy's was right off of moross there kind of where like in line where that cemetery is but yeah we'll put a link up above here people you guys can go check out that episode but uh yeah let's get into your little story here so the first was in gross point on kenwood nuns walk uh over there and uh we first moved in, it was, I, I had just come home from school, <clears throat> didn't know what to expect. And so I got shoved back into the maid's quarters. Okay. Had a nice little, like three bedroom arrangement. <clears throat> so this was a pretty ma- big house though, right? It was a good size house. Back in these maid's quarters, it just had three little bedrooms. They were probably, I want to say maybe eight by 10. There's three of them. Identical. I lived in the what we'll call the the corner one. And there was one on either in front of me and to the side of me. Um, And we, I moved in there, you know, just a, just a few days after uh, school, I was out and I was going to embark on an adventure. So I had had a couple of weeks at home and Uh a little bit working during the summer. So I show up at this place and they were like, okay, this is your space back here. Okay. I get settled in. Uh, and there was, you were never at this house. Sorry. You were never at this house prior to when you moved back in. No. Um, it was, it It was boom. You come, you go, Oh wait, no, there might've been a vacate, um, a holiday or something. I came back. Oh, this is where we live now for a day and a half and then back to school. But settling into it, this was the first time. Right. So I got these three rooms. I unpacked one room was like my guitar amp room. One room was my room where I had a little black and white TV, watched the late night show and whatnot. Um, and a couple of guitars in there, too. The room across the hall was just, we called it the girls' room. It was just, a, like I said, a little 8 by 10 room. But my mom had it done up like it was a, a holiday room from up north somewhere. Uh, the wood floor, um, the doilies on the tables and, you know, stuff like that. So it was kind of like, eh. Not really my, my room to go into. I didn't tinker over there. So yeah. <laughs> um guys not gonna be sewing too many fucking things in there, I'll tell you. No, 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 no. Uh so what was interesting is there was a little hallway that was about 20 feet long, 15, 20 feet long, and then there was another hallway that was 95 feet to the main part of the house going over the kitchen. So it was this really long, creepy arched doors, you know what I mean? Sort of a hallways and stuff like that. And when I first moved in, I would hear my mom walk back to cook the creaks on the floor and stuff while I'm unpacking. And I'd say, Hey, you know, and, Oh yeah. What are you, are you I'm naked back here. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, so that went on for, you know, a couple days. And then 
And finally, it was like settled quiet down time. And I, that's when, you know, turn, turn the lights off in the hallway, shut the guitar room down. And I'd just be watching some late night TV. And, and, and then the, the first, it all started when I'll go back to that sound of my mom walking down the hall. You know that sound, right? In everybody's house, big or small, where you know somebody's approaching, either a creak on the floor or density that you hear through the woods and that kind of stuff. And this one, exactly the same, came from real far away. And then it would go like, bup, 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 and I would pop out of my bed and I'd open my door and I'd say, hey, mom. And it would just go away. And I'd look around, flick the light on the hallway and walk 15 feet down and look down the 95 foot hallway with the creepy archways. And yeah. it's like, okay, you know, but this was once. And then it was twice. And then it was, and then it was like this repetitious thing till it was like three in the morning. And it really started to freak me out a little bit. So what, what were uh, you thinking the first time you heard it? Cause we were talking back with Jimmy and the first couple of times he heard it, he was just, he didn't even really think too much about it and until he started putting it together. He really didn't have much fear around it. Oh, it wasn't fear at first. It was innocently, oh, my mom's coming down the hallway. Because that's what I heard when I first was settling in. You know, she'd walk a creek, right. old, old house creaking. And then in the middle of the night, okay, it was creak, creak, creak. And I turn it on. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's old pipes. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. But it continued on and on. Um and it wasn't like on and on as in lay down, it happened, lay down, it happened. It would be like lay down, it would happen. And like two hours later, I'm new to this place. I would hear it again. And then I'd get up and I was like, wait, like the, this is weird. Did it happen you know? around the same type, type, type like time each time or was it all different? But it was always no. that night, I take it. Well, it was only, it was just quiet enough at night to actually just endure that process. Okay. Or to, you know, have that scenario. But I even, the next day, took it upon myself to go, okay, I'm going to go down to the end of the 95-foot hallway and just walk and see what it sounds like to my ears. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing it, and I'm hearing it, and I'm hearing it. I said, man, it sounds exactly. I mean, I'm not a giant dude, right? I, I'm bigger than my mom, you know, in terms of the weight on the floor. But right. just walking down the, and it was one of those carpets where it's old school where it's wood floor and the carpet you know what i'm saying it was like a runner it was like a runner that was 95 feet long i mean it was yeah. a creepy old oak door wood hallway and stuff like that and so i walked and tested it myself and i said man this sounds exactly like it well i'd like to give people a little background max of uh or what we'll call mr m is a. Uh sound guy you can see he's got guitars behind him and amps and all that he, he's a sound engineer that's actually how we met him he mixed our first album um so your ears are pretty acute they're pretty acute. this guy they call him <laughs> mr boggs this guy's wade wade boggs and out in the fucking boondocks right now wade, wade boggs <laughs> But yeah, no, so I just wanted to make the point that your ears are pretty damn sharp. So if you're listening to to whatever you're listening to, you got some pretty damn good ears on you. Well, it, it, it was that, but it was like how real it, it sounded to me. So then there's that. Let's fast forward to what I think was probably the next level. In that girl room that I said was across the hall. It was a room that, again, nobody used it. Um, and now all of a sudden, I am in the middle of the summer. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was the, that was the way I was working there. I'm sorry. The first, I did live there for a summer. Let me uh -huh. back up. And so that was the summer that all that happened when I came back from school. And then I went, had a summer, and then I went to senior. So sorry, I had okay. to backtrack. So first summer was just creaks and creaks and moans coming down the hallway. You did your own test. You walked the hallway, and you yeah. kind of validated that these creaks and crones were coming from some kind of pressure. It wasn't just a pipe rattling in the wall. No, it, it, was, the, it was the floor. But in that same summer, the next thing that it was in the middle of the night and I heard what otherwise could be described as random tap dancing but a little bit muted 
Um, or like if you're looking at a pipe down in the basement or something like that, like that somebody would be trying to do like little dance moves with your hands with chopsticks. Like, you know, nothing too coordinated, but some, and then all of a sudden I heard this and I always kept that door shut. And I would hear this click, 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 and I'd get up and I'd open my door and it's right across the hall. And this was a narrow maze quarters hallway. So it was probably two and a half feet wide. And I would just kind of hear this clicking in that room, but there's no light on, no this, no that. And then all of a sudden I would just go across the hall, little tingles down my spine. Yeah. And I would gr- grab the doorknob and push, open it like this. And then it would just, stop yeah said, that's why okay. i like telling these stories because i get all fucking worked up ladies and gentlemen i it feel was, those uh, tingles right now it would stop and it was an eight by ten room small little closet one that you could imagine like um yeah i know what eight by ten we used to have a fort in the back of my garage and it was pretty similar to that size but it, actually but in the closet it was this creepy closet that wasn't too deep but at the top of the closet was like one of those pressure holes that you could push up so that you could go up into the attic Uh and the attic of this place was spooky enough. I was even too afraid to ever even go up there besides to look at the entrance. Right. So I, I look in the closet and I see the thing, you know, the thing that you push to get in. Right. Right. Yeah. I have one of those in my closet. It's it's pushed up and it's turned a little bit so you can see the air. And I'm like, so I just closed the door. I'm like, this is weird. Whatever. Boom. Close it. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It was a night or two later. I heard it again. Click, 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 click. And I did the same thing. By this time, I'm like, man, you know, what time, night, the- man? What, time of- what time of night, Neo? Um, 2, 3 a.m. So I go across the room, open the door again, instantly goes away. I open the closet. The little trapdoor thing is now set in its closed position. So the next, I, I go to bed. I'm like, this is weird. I, uh, next day, I talk to my mom and dad. I'm like, did, did you have anybody over to the house? Would there be any reason somebody would be going through the crawl hole? And they were like, we, we don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. So a few more times, that's what it was. Did they have any stuff up there? They just didn't even know about that attic. No, this is in the way back of the house. There was a main attic section, but in this section, it happened a couple. It it happened a a a couple more times where I'd go in and where it would the thing would to my eyes maybe it was my own head, but I would go in and it would be in a different position. The little trap door thing. Well, this is the problem. This is the problem that's been happening with with all the people that we talk to, even Jimmy, like when it happens to him, he has this, this vision of it and it's freshly in his mind. But then as years go by, then you just start remembering, you're like, well, was it really like that? Was it really that creepy? Or was, was, was I just making all that shit up in my head? But dude, like me knowing you, you're, first of all, you're a very smart guy. You have a, a good IQ. Not that that really means all that much, but you're a highly educated man. I've never t- seen you take something and stretch it into something that it is. And it's usually, this is what it is. And this is why it's doing that. So for, for me to take some, something that you're saying, cause I'm sure like you said, you want your parents, like who is over here? Someone was storing something up there. What's the deal here? That's why I like I like your story because you're, you're such a well calculated person. Well, I appreciate all the nice things, but the, at the bottom line is this is I know what I heard. And I did the hair on my arms would stand straight up during some of these things. Um, and I didn't know what to think. And I would casually bring it up. And then there was a couple of times where my brother thought he had seen a thing or two. And then the next event I'm going to tell you kind of just kind of piled on, if you will. Is this there the was same a little, location, same location. There was a little carriage house in the back and my sister at some point in time. Are you uh, sure? Are you sure this was an Ichabod Crane's home? I mean, yeah. <laughs> what, the, what is this place, dude? Maids' it, quarters, carriage houses. <laughs> Fuck. It, it was an it was it was a uh, a nice spot that my that where my my mom and dad and my brother lived. But 
and I lived there for a summer and then for a couple weeks after college. Be that as it may, my sister lived in this little carriage house. It was like a two bedroom upstairs, a family room and a little kitchen downstairs sort of a spot. It was revamped a little bit here and there. So anyway, long story short, she lived back there. She worked and that was on the back half of the house where I was in the main house in the maid's quarters. And there was this little house you know, attached by the garage that you could get through. So I would always kind of go back there, be bopping around, knock on the door. Hey, Cam, how you doing? And we go in there, hang out, do this, do that, watch TV, watch your favorite shows, have a couple cocktails here. So my sister goes out of town one time. I don't know where she was going, visit some friends or whatever. And she's like, hey, can you know, can you go over and just, um, you know, make sure everything's cool there, blah, blah, blah. I, of course, it's on our property. It's not like even like checking a neighbor's house. So I would go in there from time to time, have a soda or have a beer or whatever, watch TV over yeah. there, blah, blah, blah. So I come home um, and everything's cool. And like a day later, my sister gets a dog. And this dog's name is Stoli. So she has this dog over there. Again, I'd go back and forth. It was took 15 seconds to walk to her apartment that was in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So she, she, she goes out of town again, comes back. There was like another couple times where I would go in and feed the dog and this and that. So long, I'm sorry, I carry on. No, long story, story short, yeah, we want the details. Finally, she couldn't handle having the dog anymore. It was too much going out of town, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. It was a little black lab. So she found somebody to adopt it. So the house is clean. Everything's good. Blah, blah, blah. She goes out of town. I go over there again. Blah, blah, I hang out in there. Blah, blah, blah. Color TV opposed to my black and white. Right. Well, you're uh, living in the twilight zone, apparently, with this black and white fucking poltergeist yeah. TV going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, um, so my sister comes home and she comes into my ear and she's like, real funny. And I was like, real funny what? She goes, yeah, real, real funny. The dog shit at the top of the stairs. And I was like, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. So she takes me, we go over and at the top of the stairs is a fucking plump, dried out dog shit. In the house? In the house at the top of the stairs. So it was like, okay, could you have missed it? You just had that little fucking dog. Sorry, dog. No, that's uh, cool. She's like, <laughs> we no, we, it's, we, it was clean. When I left this place, it was clean. This was it. She's like, I'm for sure that you got that. Because it looked like it was just like poop that was like there. It wasn't like soaked into the carpet and this and that, blah, 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 blah. So that would basically freaked everybody out. And we're like, so the dog's been gone for a week, but you come home and there's what looks to be placed dog shit at the top of the stairs, but no, nobody could explain how it got there. You saw the turd. Yep. Let me just make this sure. Sure. you saw the turd. Yeah. Right. I mean, what the fuck? How, how did this happen? bro? <laughs> I saw the shit. <laughs> so we don't know. What happened? I, I still write it off to like, okay, she was cleaning the house, but just missed it. Where was it? Like, was it in the middle of the, would you miss yeah, it? If it was, clean? If you were walking up the stairs with like a laundry basket or like a suitcase, yeah. you would step you would step right in it. Yeah, you would destroy your foot. Right. So I mean it was in an obvious spot. And like I said, it was dry ish, but still like a week later to be any moist at all. Who I adapted know. the dog? I don't even remember where, where the dog went, but could it was... Could have, it might have been, like, local and ran home. I don't know. No, but this isn't, like I said, the compound, right? The, the, the thing had no chance in hell at sneaking in a door back in her spot. She wasn't there. I didn't let the dog in, and I didn't put poop on the stairs. Yeah, that's... Uh, so that's she a heard quick... clingy, clangy noises here and there back there, but that was 70 Kenwood. Uh -huh. Um, there is a, they don't live there anymore, do they? No, no, no. They're those that's, that's, it's, that's like seven houses removed. I'm going to try and find a picture of this place. I didn't want to invite, invade their privacy. No. Um, 
And then there was a house two doors down we moved to that I don't have any specific stories like that, but still got the feeling that when I would sleep over there, I was out moved out of the house far by then. But when I would stay over and this and that, um, still it was yeah. another, one of those, I don't know, 10,000 some square foot old gross point houses that there were just parts of the house that were just beyond creepy. Is this the bad? Hold on. Check this out. Yeah, I mean, that's the same thing that Jimmy was saying. And actually, the next house I buy, I'm going to make sure that I have Mr. Ghost Egon Vankman come with me so he can tell me if the place is haunted or not. Is yeah. this the place? That's it. Yeah, that yep. kind of looks like one of my buddies. You can tell that the backyard goes super deep back there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Are you uh, Are you on Google? Yeah. Okay, so go back into that into that street view and then go uh, no scroll the other way yep keep on going keep on going so you see the street okay yeah. see just beyond that pickup truck move down there oh i'm gonna flick back over here so i don't how do you move you, just, you should be able to put a marker down and click if you're in like the Google Earth, the maps thing. Yeah, I have it. I can I see know. you. I don't can know I how to move this turd gurgler. Hold on. Can I share my screen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so, pretty, that, just for the audience so they know like the story that Jimmy told is a couple blocks away from there. And again, there was a. Indian massacre again. I don't know if that has anything to do with this, but I know there's some spots in Windmill Point that there's like a there's signs in the in the ground that say Foxwood Indian Massacre. Something that you want to brag about? I'll tell you that. Well, it could be. Um... No, no, no. That's that's. But it's historic for them. You know, they lost their wives. At least they get the little stupid ass sign. Right. Yeah, but, you know, now we have to live in these haunted, haunted homes. Wow. Well, right, here we street. go, baby. Yeah, so this was this was the house, and way up the driveway, and all the way back here was where my room was. I mean, way back. Yeah, it looks like uh, a sick house, though. Along along there. So if we just travel along the uh, the old beaten path here. <laughs> the magical mystery tour here. The magical mystery tours. We oh, come... is that dockside landscaping? Is that dockside property <laughs> services? Oh, that's crazy balls, isn't it? Um, yeah. No, on. this is definitely a lot newer than... I don't even know what company that is. I don't even recognize them. You don't? Gross Point is a mecca for all things, this for all was, work. This was just down the street. Remember, the old house was over here. Yeah. This was the house number two. This thing is even sicker, it looks so like. So it, it had this whole little back end here, another maid's quarters where my brother lived. Uh-huh. And my room was just inside on the other part of this little thing. I say my room the five times in two years or three years that I actually slept there. Right, right, right. But uh, this was the other one that had all kinds of creepy stuff going on in the basement. There was a, a uh, like a say, a vault that looked like a, a bank vault from the 18. Dude, 19, Jimmy, early Jimmy's story 1900s. had that too. Yeah. It so was right when he moved in, there was this massive, uh, this massive safe thing like that, where you could, you, like a kid could be, you could put humans in it pretty much. It was that big. Did you hear about that, Jimmy? He's talking about this. There was a massive vault in the, in the basement of that place. Massive vault. I mean, one, it was a whole room. And at some point in time, they yeah, did a, that's what they, they do. They get me going. They get my juices going. But there's so many similarities between these stories: the time, the noises, the feeling, you know. And I think that uh, that really gets it just solidifies, at least for me, kind of what I was saying. Yeah. Am I back, or do you still see my screen? No, your face, your beautiful face is back. But all right, so these are the stories from the Gross Point area. Then you actually you moved out to like Beverly Hills, Birmingham area, right? 
Yeah, and we're the uh, crazy. It's a you know we 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 love the space. It's just a nice little uh, home, and uh, but the weird thing about this house, the unique thing is that we're only the second owners. So it was built in 1953 or something like that, and a new couple bought the house, lived here, li- you know, lived here, and I don't know if they died in the house or around the house or just outside, but there's a cemetery right behind the backyard. It's a little ways off. This is more like a a good few acres of maintenance land and blah, blah, blah. But there's a cemetery in that corner. I don't back up to another house. Right. But they lived into their nineties, you know, obviously. Um, And I don't, again, I don't know if they died in the house, but here, there's nothing creepy about this, the basement here. There's, there's nothing creepy about the upstairs. There's been some remodeling done and whatnot. But the weird thing is that every now and again, the doorbell will go off. And it's not only the doorbell. like you, It's one of those electric doorbells. It's, it's wireless, you know, blah, blah, blah. You hit the button on the outside, and you have a thing above the door. You change the batteries every nine months or a year. Right, because how often is your doorbell? But it rings now and again. But then all of a sudden, here and there, there's like a button you hit to do a battery check, and it'll like do a beep 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 beep. And you know, if it does it four times, you're good. If it does it three times, you're seventy five percent, fifty percent, and so on. So we hear that every now and again, and then I heard it once. So I go downstairs and I change the batteries, put a new set of batteries in. And it was like a day later, it just went beep, beep, like the batteries were dead. So I take them out. I'm like, I just changed the batteries. Get a new set of batteries, put them in there. Beep, beep, the next day. Change the batteries. And then I press the battery test and beep, 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 does it four times. And it was a couple days later, the battery test went off. It did it once. And then randomly the doorbell. And then you can change the doorbell settings that I want it to sound like this. Ding dong, or whatever. Uh-huh. Well, when it goes off, it doesn't do that one. It does one of the other selections, which is not a program. It's like a button. You like have to switch it. So if I rang your doorbell, one sound would come out, but right. that, but then randomly you hear a different sound. Yes. What the hell? So when I looked it up on, I know searched up there, go, oh, yeah, some neighbor nearby has the same thing and something or some cell phone is triggering the frequency blah 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 there's the scientific reason behind it yeah. but for my wife and i it's uh just weird or it's a childish prank that oh, could ding be dong true. ditch bro this is well, the ding well, dong ditch of the 20th century they little they ding dong changed. dead <laughs> Little and that's the dong. name of this episode, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ding dong dead. <laughs> that's right. I don't Ugh. think I missed, but were there any visual things, either of the homes? Were there anything that more than noise in that? Um, back on 70 Kenwood, the, yeah, the, the creaky, again, just more of the creaky cracklies, you know, here and there. Um, the basement in 90 Kenwood was just more of a, you could feel it. You're down in the basement. It's really creepy. You just, yeah, you but just, do you think that's the, your mind or do you think there's actually something kind of energy in there? I don't know when something you, when you feel like a coolness go across you. Yeah, that's what Jimmy you know, was saying. I mean, you're kind of scared in the first place, so maybe you're susceptible to that. Uh, uh-huh. But but when you're when when it went down the basement on and that uh, yeah no it's uh, you just go like this and you're like I'm out of here like. And you were a, you were a young adult too. You weren't like a. Like I was a, a man. Five... I was a grown man. Right, right. Because we all have that feeling when you're coming up your basement stairs, you think like someone's like gonna chase you up there. Like that's a feeling yeah. I've had. I've never had any ghost encounters. Um, that's why I'm pretty skeptical. But again, these people that tell me these stories, like I know people that some of like the smartest the, people. The feeling isn't 
okay, there's a mugger down here, you know, and I have to, uh, I have to arm myself, right? I'm going to go run for a weapon or this or that or a knife or a gun or something like that. That's not, that's not the feeling you get when you run up the stairs in those gross point basements. This is like straight up horror. You're going to be dragged down by, you know what I mean? It's uh -huh. you're, you're I, I'm an imaginative person. So, I, again, it might be me psyching myself out, which is probably what it was. But what evokes that? Right. When you walk upstairs and you're just terrified, not of somebody getting you, uh -huh. right, or punching the face or dragging you downstairs and beating you to death. It's just the fear of the unknown. What could possibly be making you feel that way? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's... That's the that's the thing in question, and that's why it's so hard to prove this to a lot of people. Well, there's no there's no way to prove it. It's almost more like an experience. No way to prove it. To, yeah. Anybody would tell me I was a maniac. Yeah, right. I, you know. But, but while well, your siblings agreed with you, right? They didn't think you were so whacked out. They never heard um, the major. I mean, they never in, in in great detail, but they had their own experiences of like, yeah, this this is weird. Yeah. Weird stuff happens here. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's. I think it's that gross point area. I. Uh, I'm gonna save my story. Well, it's not my story. It's my mom's story from Harson's Island. But that's like another hot spot, apparently, with the paranormal. But what I, what I was telling Jimmy and the other one is, it might be, it might not be something like existing in in all of space and time. It might be like a con like you might be this conduit. That has to like experience it through you somehow. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's like if if there was three I people mean, standing in a room, and one person witnessed something, the other two may not necessarily witness that, but that doesn't also make it not true, because someone might have more of a sensitivity to be able to tune into that kind of thing. That's what that's what me and Jimmy were talking about. That's why he's like he's like when I go into basement, sometimes I can feel it just doesn't feel right. Yeah, not just basement areas homes outdoors woods it's kind of what uh, neil was saying and, and it's an interdimensional feeling it's um it's not a murderer well your audio is just murdered boggy so. mcboggerson <laughs> <laughs> just got wade box up. hit it out of the park again folks that was the look on my face when I saw the ghost <laughs> right there. <laughs> wow, We're live in a dark tournament. <laughs> my bad. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm, again, these stories from Gross Point, I might try and – I remember I found this book. It's like Gross Point Ghost Stories, and it was pretty interesting. I don't know how much of the stuff you can take – you got to take it as a fucking – as what it is, but – yeah. I don't know, man. Like I said, I'd like you. You're one of the smarter people I know. My other buddy, Devin. I mean, these are people that have, they're not just some fucking UFO crazy nuts. They're people that have, that are pretty damn well thought, well spoken, well uh, educated people. And they're not just making shit up for the hell of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I would have no reason to make this up. But I will tell you what I felt and what I saw and what I experienced. Was it a figment of my imagination? I don't know. Was it, it was a me psyching myself out, but it it was so vivid. You said before that you could people remember these stories, and they might not be what they thought. I I vividly remember uh -huh. what it yeah. was like to, to experience those weird things, and especially and mainly in seventy Kenwood when I was there. Beautiful, man. Well, we appreciate you coming on and, and, and chit-chatting with us about this stuff. Your camera looks very crisp. I can count every hair on your face. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I still can't grow a beard myself yet, but I'm working on it. Yeah, this is uh, six months for me. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's about the same for me. It's just it, these uh, us Irish boys. But you know what's good is we look young for a long time. And I can't well, I just, complain. I just had my 28th birthday. Last month, and so I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, well, I'm 26, so you know, life's going good. Feels like <laughs> I've lived a lot longer. I got a lot more experience. God, what if you could go back to that age and know what you know now? Oh, jeez. Yeah. You well, yeah, man. Uh, what are you? What are you? What are you doing for fun in this quarantine session? Just jamming, rocking the guitars and stuff. 
doing a little uh doing a little bit of playing i did an experimental recording um of trying to replicate a, a tom petty tune the other day so i started that so far so good nice. uh updated the studio uh recording interface um added some amps um added a guitar uh, and just you know, experimenting now. Now I also uh, going to be experimenting with the program, um, a drumming program uh, for those nights that I can't bang on the drum set over there, just so, so I can write all my own drum parts and everything like that. And then I can export it into my. That's awesome. Session yeah. and, and just experiment a little bit more. Yeah, for the people that don't know, the the song Skin Mitt, actually the beat was conceived by oh, the old skin bag duo of... Uh, oh yeah, it's we, old, that's old, that's old, old, old. Yeah, but no, that beat's phenomenal, and then uh, Neo, Neo, the master of dimensions, actually plays the guitar solo on that that jam too, he's, he's quite the rocker, but yeah man, if you could ever, if you ever get a chance or have any hidden hip-hop beats... We would love to try them on for size. They might fit like a mitt. You know, I'll, I think I'll just go ahead and create some new ones for you guys. <laughs> All right, dude. Yeah, we're uh, we're working on some new rap tunes. We're gonna dial it back a little bit. I know that the last couple have been a little bit grab, a little bit, a little bit real in your face, a little, a little innuendo action. But you know, <laughs> we gotta dial it back a little bit because we just can't advertise the stuff anywhere. It's a different time in the comedy world. It is, you know, it is what it is, but. Yeah. Well, I'd be happy to write some beats, and then you got to come down and record the vocals down in. Uh, oh yes. In, in the in the tech as well. I got yeah, some, the last uh, one we did was the the last one I, I thought came out phenomenal. Stuff. Oh, it did, and uh, we, we'll go next level here at this point. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, is there any uh, any last words of wisdom, old Neo? Can you bend? Can you help us bend the spoon or? Um, let me try and see if I can bend the spoon here real quick. <laughs> Too bad we don't have the, uh, you should have had the plug, you should have the guitars plugged in and so <clears throat> fucking melting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we'll have another addition because what I'm going to do is, uh, basically wire everything, the entire studio into a port and channel that i can put into this box yeah and then uh have some uh some good sounding mixes of some drums and if i can ever have another person down here playing we can start doing some live broadcasts of some jam sessions yeah we were we were kicking the idea around i don't think it's going to happen on uh, Fat Earth's birthday, ladies and gentlemen, is next Saturday. It's May sixteenth. It will be two years old on Saturday. We were talking about maybe doing some rapping, some live rapping, but that could, that'd be a good way to test those out because it's just me and Jimmy. So maybe we can come down there, you know, in a couple of weeks or something. Well, well when this stuff starts to clear up a little bit, I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I feel safe enough coming over there with you. I think we've all been pretty sheltered and yeah, no, yeah. We, my wife and I, we've been we've been off the grid for for some time now. Um, the other thing. I don't know if this necessarily belongs on the air at this point in time, but the um, is to experiment with some of this. I've been, you know, how you watch the fucking TV and everybody's got their home jams, right? You see, right? Like, yeah, this, that, you know. And I'm always like, yeah, I know how this shit works, right? Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. I still have trouble believing that. I still have trouble believing that everything I've seen is for real when it comes to this interactive space. So I want to be like myth busters when it comes to that. Cause I have the gear, you have the gear there, right? A microphone and this and this and acoustic guitar or a regular guitar. And we plug them in and actually try to see if jamming over the internet with headphones on actually works. Because if right. it does, I have enough computers in this house that I actually could probably build tracks for everybody and remix it. Beautiful. If it, wow. if it works. I have like, what, five laptops in this house? So if I get, you know, me on drums, you on guitar, someone on bass, and somebody else on guitar, 
I can take each of those laptops, wire them to a channel in the mixer, record it all and see if it all makes sense and record all the audio in that Skype session. Nice. I think I can figure it out. Well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we have a challenge on our hands. I do. I want to try it. So, yeah, we uh, Friday Night Frights, episode 32, coming at you. We got, our, we got our buddy Neo here. He's he's interdimensional. He might pop up and tell you tell you the hello today, but uh, Jimmy's out in Bogsville. And uh, <laughs> we'll talk to you guys <coughs> next time. All right. Peace. Peace. Thank you, Neo.